You got it locked on rodeo radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in a motherfucking house. So right about now. And I say, yo Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me that never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play. Hey, don't shit mix by Dr. Dre. Hey, since I was a youth, I like concert. Now I like a motherfucking rodeo. Buying a tape or two, that's what the hell I do. You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game. And I'm in it. Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute with a right, left, right, making you sick. And then you see Tony A is on the mix. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Rodeo Radio, episode 221. Okay, I don't know if it says 223 on the screen, but it says episode 221, just in case there was a, a mix-up. But I, I want to thank everybody that tuned in, everybody that's on the live chat, everybody who's commenting, subscribing, liking, sharing, whatever. Just thankful you guys tuned in. Much love, much respect to all you guys. If you guys didn't get a chance to watch Dining with the Wizard last night with me and Be Scandalous, make sure you guys go check that out. That shit was hella funny. So other than that, uh, once again, if you want to buy an ad, so that we can promote your business, whether you have a, you know, an album coming out, whether you have a business, whether you have a restaurant, whether you want to promote your OnlyFans page, it doesn't matter. Hit us up at rodeonradio at gmail.com and we will go ahead and uh, set, set you up. We'll play your ad during the breaks and we'll promote you. So other than that, submit your music to rodeonradio at gmail.com. Once again, give us your music, uh, videos if you have any, and a short bio. And we will get back to you via email. Other than that, you know, my next guest is somebody that, uh, how would you say, growing up, the Booyah tribe, especially if you're from the Harbor area, they were like legends to us. So I'm not going to go ahead and rattle on, so we're going to go ahead and uh, introduce my very special guest, Cobra from the Booyah tribe. How you doing, my brother? Good, brother. I'm good, man. I'm I good. appreciate that. You, you know, sometimes when I meet and conversate with people like yourself I get so humbled because growing up in this area and going to Scott Park going to Carson because that was the only pool that we had at the time for, for the summer right. you know and seeing all the music the DJing the popping the breaking Carson just had such a rich history of hip hop if we will all the elements whether it's DJing whether it's uh, b-boying whether it's rapping whether it's graffiti it's all there, right. you know, and you guys were a huge, huge part of that. You know, I was sharing with you that the last time I seen you was at a, was at a KRLA car show in 1997. So it's been a minute. Yeah. So it's a long minute. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so, so how you been, brother? You been I've good? I've been good, man. You know what I'm saying? I just been, you know, just been blessed. You know what I'm saying? Just yes. keep it pushing, you know, but That's uh, right. yeah, you know. Okay. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about sports because I'm a big time sports guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, it's football season. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. Come on, man. You know, I'm a Raiders, man. Okay. Let's go. You know, the Raider Nation. <laughs> oh, man. All my fans know, bro, and I hope you forgive me. LA Raiders. I, I, I used to be like, I'm the number one Raider hater. <laughs> but you know what? It's all That's love. Nice. It's all love, man. So um, are you happy with how the Raiders are doing this year, man? Uh, you know, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? I'm still a Raider, you know. Right, right. You know? It's all good. It's Win all or good. lose, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. it, you know, so. So, so I trust, and I like to ask these questions because I like to see what kind of, uh, um, if you will, what kind of teams my guests like. For an example, I meet a lot of guys from L.A. that I automatically assume they're a Lakers fan. They're like, no, nah, I'm a Boston fan. So I trust you're a Lakers fan? All the way, baby. Come on now. Okay, okay. Dodgers? Dodgers. Everything L.A., man. Mm. That'll work. Now, um, there's so much that I want to ask, especially growing up here, that it's going to be impossible to, if you will, share the story of Booyah. Right. So, but because D-Boy is here, 
you know, uh, one day I would like to bring you back and just dig deeper into the history of Booyah. But for now, let's give the people at least, you know, yeah. some history. No problem. So uh, originally from Carson. Yep. Okay. Uh, born and raised with your family. Uh, and- we was born in Hawthorne, California. Okay. Yeah. But raised in, you know, in Carson, you know what I'm saying? From junior high, you know, from Bonita Elementary to Carnegie, you know what I'm saying? To Carson, you know what I'm saying? All the brothers, you know, from, from Godfather, you know what I'm saying? Gangsta Rid. Well, Gangsta Rid, he actually dropped off out of junior high. Oh, okay. He was actually the hard head out of the brothers. Oh, yeah. okay. But I graduated, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had to, you know what I'm saying? You know, Pops was on our ass, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those were the good years where Bannon and Carson were always oh, going man. to war. Legend. And you got to remember in them days, you know what I'm saying, you got uh, Mike Allo, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my Number God. Number 31 from Banny High, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know that, man. He was. Beast. Like I said, you know, they're, they're going to have a thing for uh, for Frank Maluna for the, you know, uh, Simone Athlete in Action. And like I said, they had all the pros in there. He was the only one in high school that was already on it, you know what I'm saying? That's Mike Allo, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Yes, sir. And he just recently passed away, not too long, what, is it about a year maybe yeah, or so? Yeah, about, okay. about a few years. Okay. Yeah. Wow, man. Actually, he's actually family, you know? So, yeah, he was part of our group too, you know what I'm saying? He was one of the singers, you know, from the Tribe Kings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he had a voice too. So, yeah. you, you know, one thing that a lot of people may not ever ask you, and I know because I actually went there and bought records when you guys used to own a record store. Yeah, uh, right uh, there in Carson, right there by by Scottsdale. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Right at the corner of Avalon and Sapporo. Yeah. yeah, right there by uh, by Tom's. Yeah, yeah ex- exactly. Sure. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I bought you guys' first twelve inch there. It was a yellow one. Yes, it was actually our first independent one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow. and, I, and I bought yeah, it. Yeah, that's there. actually a collector's. Yeah. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I, I'm trying to remember what I did with it because I had you guys sign it. Right. And I, <laughs> I, and I a lot of my records that I kept and that I didn't want here no more because I was trying to make space. I kept them on my boys' pad, so I believe that it's still there. But you guys all signed it there. Yeah, that was like our first one. Uh, what was the song? Uh, you know, uh, you know, Gangsta Rid on that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying it was our first introduction. You know, that actually got us a deal with Island Records, Fourth and Broadway. Yes. You know. You know, and that's what got us to the, you know, to the big league, Island Records. Yeah. You know, with Chris Blackwell, you know what I'm saying? Actually signing the tribe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. Wow, Chris Blackwell. I haven't heard that name in a minute. Yeah. Oh, so. Yeah. Another legend, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. Mean, you know, he, you know, discovered Bob Marley, you know what I'm saying? But he actually signed the tribe, you know what I'm saying? Wow. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of history, man. You know, I wanted to bring something up, you know, um, growing up here, you know, especially when you think of Carson, you think of Scott Park, you think of, uh, 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 the, we call it the Dale, Scottsdale, yeah. Carson Twin Cinema. Actually, we actually lived in Scottsdale for a minute right there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. For a minute. Yeah. Then we had a Carson Twin Cinema growing up. Yeah. Try it. Big John's Hall. Come Big to John's find Hall. out, Big John was your uncle? Yeah. Okay. We actually, we used to do, uh, you know, dances out there, you know what I'm saying? And we used to have a lot of the popping back in the days, you know what I'm saying? We were actually hosted. You know, we'll have like, you know, Ice T, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, Shabadoo, and all of them forget, you know, special guests, you know, to come right. out there and, and you know, and then uh, be, uh, you know, the competition, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, yeah. right. But like I said, there's a lot of history. A lot of people don't know that it's been really rich out here in Carson, you know what I'm yes. saying? It was like I told you earlier, you know what I'm saying? It was more like a Mecca. And you had to come with it, you know what I'm saying? When you had, you know, from dancing alone, you know, and then, you know. Yeah. Like, it's like I said, it's a lot of history. Yeah, no, it's very, very true. And two guys that I grew up always hearing their name, but I only had the privilege to see them pop once was Heckle and Jekyll, Jack and Charlie. Yeah. And I remember being somewhere, and this is going to be funny. <laughs> For one summer, I hung around with Boogaloo Shirt and Michael Chambers. Right. Okay. And I'm carrying his boombox, and he's playing Yellow, Ma- Yellow Magic Orchestra. Yeah, my favorite song. Yeah. Dope ass <laughs> song. Okay. Computer games. Yeah. Okay. And I'm holding it, and he's popping. Some Simone girl comes out and she says, why are you doing Jack and Charlie's moves? <laughs> you know, because back then you get called out because you're biting. Of course. You know, of course. nobody copied, nobody's DJ style, nobody copied, nobody's poppy style, nobody's breaking style. Everybody had their own little signature moves. Right. And he was doing his, their moves. I guess he thought nobody was going to, you know, find out. Well, like I said, you know, Heck on Jekyll, you know, they're actually my uncles, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're legend, you know what I'm saying? Coming yeah. from the Bay. You know, and then they come to Long Beach and they end up coming to Carson, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. The, the story is, is that when they came and they, you know, they met, my brother met them for the first time. They actually battled at the Twin Cinema. Oh. And then, uh, you know, at that time they were locking, you know what I'm Yes. Saying? But then, uh, you know, they, they pressed play and they came out and they, you know, they start coming with that strut and that boogaloo style. Yeah. And that's how my brother was like, 
damn, you know, what's that, you know? Right. And, you know, next thing you know, you know, they, they were like, you know, uh, you know, going places to play. My brother invited to come to the house. And we were there right there on, you know, on the 223rd. So they ended up walking, you know, from, from the theater after they battled. And then, uh, you know, as soon as, uh, you know, my brother Godfather came in and my, my mom was, was, was cooking. Yeah. And they're looking and they go, oh, man, you know, Shocky and Jack. You know, they were like, what? You know, because my mom knew them, you know, when they right. were back in the islands. But, you know, short stories that we became family from there. And then that's how they taught us, you know, saying how to dance, you know, saying from Heckle and Jekyll, you know, Jack and Charlie. Wow. From, you know, but like I said, from from Blue City, you know, saying to to my brother, to Mike, because there's like three generations. Yes. You know, saying that we all, you know, learning, uh, you know, the Boogaloo style. OK. You know, and that's one thing that I wanted to ask, because a lot of people I like to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this was before Booyah Tribe. I asked you earlier, exactly. th there was a group that was recorded in a in a documentary called Breaking and Entering. It yeah. came out in 1983, and it was filmed in Scott Park, one part where Blue City all came out yeah. and popped. This was a group. Exactly. Yeah. Now, now you're telling us that that was before Booyah Tribe. Yeah, before. Okay. You know, because like I said, my, well, my brother, Godfather, was the visionary of the family. Okay. So his whole thing was he knew that dancing only can take it that far. So he told the group that, the next group is going to be my little brothers. So we went from dancing and then we formed, you know, when my brother caught this case and he was in the, he went and caught this case and went to jail. And when he came out from Camp Miller, he told me, he told my brother, he goes, man, I got this new thing. And my brother Godfather said, well, what you got? He goes, and he started flowing. And then Godfather looked and he goes, damn, what is that? And he goes, nigga, some gangster rap, man. So he just started freestyling. That's how everything started. So what Godfather did was like, well, you know what? Let's put a group together. And then that's how we form the Booyah tribe. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, coming from dancing, you know what I'm saying, from that phase into rapping. Yeah. And that's how, you know, that's how we formed the tribe after that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To me, it was important because living here, I've never heard of the of, of Blue City after that doc, that documentary. Right. And then I hear Booyah tribe, and I'm like, bro, I could swore that those yeah, are them. There's a connection. Yeah. Like... <laughs> And I have been wanting to ask one of you guys that question for years. Right, right. You know, because people don't say, nah, that's not them. That's not, bro, that's them, yeah. you know. But going to Scott Park, to me, as a kid, was always like, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. We used to always get over, be over there, get punked the fuck out of here. And I'm like, <laughs> we come in peace, you know, because we wanted to go to the pool. Yeah. You know. You know what I'm saying? 25 cents for the pool. <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly, it, exactly. And, and it was cool because, like, all of Carson, my best memories, going to Carson Twin Cinema, going to Try It, going to Big John's Hall, going to the library. Uh, hey, uh, I remember the library. <laughs> yeah, the library. Uh, uh, Radio Shack was yeah. right there. And my Auntie Rose had a, you know, she used to cut hair. You know what I'm saying? Oh, remember that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my first battle, I won in 1988, and Julio G from Katy was the judge at San Marico Hall. Yes. And, and at San Marico, that was my uncle, San Marico. You know, so he was the owner right there. Oh no! Yeah, it's a small world, you know what I'm saying. But like wow. I said, we used to we used to throw our dances at Big John's Hall and San Marico. You know oh, what I'm saying. Matter okay. of fact, a lot of people know NW, NWA even performed that over the San Marico. Yes, that's right. But they wasn't called NWA. They had another name before uh -huh. they started. But man, they was like, God damn! Look at all these Usos fighting. It's thick <laughs> up in this motherfucker. <laughs> They were like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Now, now uh, uh, can you give us a little bit of history? Because I know you. Uh, there was a lot of groups that performed at Big John's, but you shared a story about that your uncle, how he was trying to gather up all the kids. Yeah, uh, Big John, you know, Maluno, you know what I'm saying? He's legendary, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he has his brother Frank that actually played pro, you know mm. what I'm saying? And he played for the Chiefs, you know what I'm saying? That's Frank Maluno, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But his brother John is actually, you know, for the city of Carson, he was like, uh, you know, a regulator, but he was really about the people. See, a lot of people don't understand about Carson is that the reason why Carson was was entertaining because, you know, we had a lot of Usos that's coming from Long Beach and Compton and Santa Ana. They actually didn't have a lot of things going on. Yeah. So Carson, we had a lot of stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? We had the Flag Day. You know what I'm saying? We had everything at Scott Park that, you know what I'm saying? We had Halloween. We just had a lot of stuff for, for the youth. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, like I said, Big John used to go to all the parents, you know what I'm saying? And he used to have this waiver and he would go all, and if you were on that, you know, if you, if you was a gang member or you try to act the fool, 
Right. You know what I'm saying? You'll be on that list. And if you're on that list, he'll go by every school. He'll go by Carnegie, Wilmington, Banny, Carson, Norbon. He'll go to Long Beach. And, he'll, and you know, he'll be him. And he used to be, man, he's about, man, he was big. He was like 500 pounds. He didn't have a cane. He had like a two by four. You know what I'm saying? He was just, and he had about eight Simones in the back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All you see this, all you see this, uh, you know, he had this orange truck. So all the homies be like, oh, shit, big jump cut. Like, yeah. you know, big jump and say, hey, grab him. You know what I'm saying? They come and he come whoop that ass. Oh, shit. But uh, like I said, that was Big John. Besides that, for for the community, he was he was really bringing it together. You know, even when we had Simone Flag Day, you know what I'm saying? He would bring all to, everyone together. Yes. You know, if he was coming from Compton, if he was coming from Long Beach or Carson or Santa Ana in the early days. Yes. You feel me? So he was always about togetherness, you know, that unity. And, uh, you know, that's Big John, you know, just a legend, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's dope, that's dope. Now, uh, as far as groups, do you remember what groups used to perform there? Because I remember that one of the first times I ever saw Kid Frost was at Big John's. I saw him yeah. there. Uh, uh, but what other groups come to mind that? Man, what's that one? Uh, 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 ladies, Ed, remember that old cut? They performed there. You know, I mean, a lot of people performed over there. Yeah, was yeah. Like, uh, LA Dream Team. At LA Dream Team. I remember Team. when they performed, I was like, Damn, they here. You're right, right. <laughs> they right. here in the neighborhood. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah. Now, you're si now when you guys come together and uh, um, you guys uh, put together Booyah Tribe, who came up with the name and why that name? Well, you know, remember in the, in the early '80s, you know, what I'm saying there was that, you know, the drug was called Booyah. Booyah. You know, yes. and you got that Booyah. Yes. So you know, we was in Scottsdale. You know, what I'm saying. So my brother Goff, I was like, man, you know, you know, you see big ass Simones. You know, what I'm saying, well, what, how can we make it with that booyah, like you know how motherfuckers walk into the door and they'll say booyah, you know, like impact. Right. So my brother God said, Man, man, like we the drug motherfucker, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let us come in there, you know, like booyah. So when we, he said that, I go, you know what? We're gonna take that name. And then we just got, you know, back in the days, a lot of people don't know that a lot of them was claiming posse. So my brother Godfather, you know, he's always going the other way. He didn't want to claim posse. Right. Because there was a lot of rap groups claiming the posse. Yes. God, my brother God said, Man, fuck that. Now we're gonna claim the tribe. And we were like, all right, that's all right. Dope. what, what? And that's that's when we started the Booyah Tribe. So you remember, Booyah Tribe is a sound of a shotgun. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But impact, you know what I'm saying? So if you see six Simones with long hair braided, you know, mobbing into the club, they're like, damn, who these my Booyah? You know, so <laughs> you feel me? So that was actually how we got the name. You know, we coined that name and then, you know, we ran with it. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's yeah. dope. Now, okay, so you guys put, uh, you guys come together. Now, me being a producer and a DJ, how did you guys come up with track? Did you guys contact the producer? Did you guys just buy equipment and say, you know what, let's do it ourselves? How did that come about? Man, one time, you know, you know, you know, uh, Tony G, you know, yes. producer. And uh, one time I was telling my boy about it, man, this dude was one of the, he, you know, you know, what, back in LA, they used to have a club out there and he was out there cutting. And I was like, Damn, amazing DJ. Who is that? Ain't no one scratching. He was scratching it. Like he was, you know, killing it. So we ended up being friends with Tony G. And actually, Tony G actually introduced the Kid Frost and everybody else. So he was actually our first producer. So that album, that yellow album that you said, you yes. know what I'm saying? That's what it's called, Coming Hard to America. Because a lot of people don't know, like, well, who the fuck are Simones? Well, Usos at that early. Right. So but that's when my brother said, you know what? We, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to, we're going to call this album Coming Hard to America. You know what I'm saying? And what was, uh, uh, yeah, that one track, uh, One Time was, was the track. Yeah. That was the, the yeah. first single, One Time. Yeah. W w one of the ones that I really, really enjoyed, that's, uh, I thought it was a fucking dope-ass song, Psycho Funk. Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. shit was hard. That shit was hard. Produced yeah. also by Tony. Yes. You know. So so you guys meet him. You guys, oh, let's, we're putting together this group. Uh, we want some tracks. It comes out. What was the, the feedback that you guys were getting when that shit dropped? Man, it's funny, you know. Even like you said, we were talking about E40. We we went to the Bay first, and then we, and, you know, back in the day, you were selling your, your you know off your trunk, right? And the funny thing, that's when we actually ran into E40 at another spot, a distro spot. That's how we became friends with E40, with his family, his sister, and them, and us, because we were selling it from the trunk. Yeah. And then we started our you know our relationship with the Bay. You know, it, you know, shout out to E40. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? But uh, um, you know, and I shared with you that story yeah, earlier yeah, about yeah. So, but. Well, yeah, but like I said, everything comes full circle, you know. Yes. What I'm but uh, you know, the music, it was like you know my brother Monster, you know what I'm saying, you know producing, you know what I'm saying, you know everybody had their own thing, you know that that brings something into the music to create the first album, right? Which was that one that you know uh, that we talked about, you know, coming yeah. out to America. Yeah, you know what? And uh, uh, I get signed to uh, 
Hollywood Records, which is owned by Disney. Yeah, we was actually signed to that. Yes, okay. <laughs> That's what I, where I want to go. There was a guy there named Funkin' Funky Clown. Clown. Passed away, rest in rest peace. Rest in peace, yes. Dang. And he talked so highly of you. I go, bro, if you only knew. They're like from the hood, bro. <laughs> and he goes, you know that? I go, I'm not going to sit here and say I know them, but yes, in a sense, because they're from Carson, bro. You know, you know it's funny. A lot of people don't know how big Funkin' Client was from New York. Yes. Now, I remember he left New York to come to America to start his independence. Yes. So when we got signed to that, he, di- he actually passed in the middle of the project. See, a lot of people don't know, like, see, Booyah Tribe, we only had one album release, the Red Album. Yes. But a lot of people don't know there was a lot of controversy behind it. So just recently in the last three weeks, we just got nine of our albums that's never been heard. I'm keeping it real. That's never been heard. It's just got released. Wow. And like I said, it's funny you said that about Funkin' Klein. He was one of the ones that, uh, that that we did that album, and it's one of the coldest albums I, I heard it. He yeah. played it for me. Yeah. There was a track, and I don't know if it ever got released, but there was one, Ice Cube was on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe King T yeah. was on there. There's a song called Celebrate. Yeah. Did, yeah. did that ever, Frost. Okay, did that ever come out? Not really, but it's, it's actually because that's our album number two. That's what, yeah. So a lot of people don't know, see, a lot of people don't know that we got signed from a group from another label, a lot of independent labels, but a lot of them went busted. Some went major. We had, a, we had about five albums that was only released in Europe by Bulletproof. Oh. So all our fans, a lot of people don't know, our fan base is Europe. We're killing it in Europe. That's awesome, man. And the funny thing is that everyone that was here, that was rocking here, yeah. but when you go to Europe, I'm going to keep it real. Yeah. It's the hardest crowd pleaser. Even though that you get your shit, you, you, get, you get out there and you fuck shit up, right. but over there, if you don't come with it on the live, you done. So Booya, my brother, us, we knew that we had Europe because they, they seen motherfuckers was coming out doing 30 minute shows. Man, we doing an hour and 30 minute show. <laughs> Man, our show's like a fucking freak show. That's dope. Booya tribe, everything. If you actually seen the show, it's everything from dancing, you know what I'm saying, singing, harmonizing, and live band. That was pretty much it. That's Booya Tribe. So Europe, thank God, all these years, they always been our big fan base. So they 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 just say fuck America, man, because you know they they wanted that G shit. Yeah. So we was always accepted in Europe. You know, like I said, nine albums just got released about what uh, about three months ago. So a lot of our stuff is finally on the platform that you can actually see it. You hear it like this album called Doomsday. That's album number four, 1994. If you hear a lot of the songs on that, my brother ripped ripped that shit out. Like it was on some, like you know, yeah. check that out, Doomsday. Okay. Album okay. number four, off the fucking chain. Yeah. So album number two. Uh, uh, album number two is uh, Good Times and Bad Times. Okay. That's the album you're talking about. And matter of fact, we even had a, a track that we did a track with George Clinton. It's called All Up In That P-Funk. Man, when George Clinton came into the thing, we were like, damn, we yeah. about to do a track with George Clinton. Yeah. And that motherfucker came in and go, mother. And he get, that's when he gave, hey, hey, he went, hey, gangsta red. Smell my finger. I'll give you the pee fuck. And we said, damn. <laughs> so he goes, hey, from here on, uh, uh, Booyah, y'all can play. You guys, you can play, uh, hold the flag on stage. Man, my brothers went crazy. Because, you know, us, we, were, we was like, he's like God, you know what I'm saying, George Clinton. Yes. But actually doing a track with him, and he's on the front. He's, you see it, man. The track's called All Up In That Pee Fuck. Cold-ass track. Wow. But like I said, it was another single. But like I said, uh, a lot of our albums and a lot of our material, it didn't come out. It only came out in Europe. But a lot of the fans now, they finally can hear all the shit that we were doing. It's nine, we got nine right now on all platforms right now. Wow. Yeah, so. That's, wow, that's amazing. Because I, <laughs> I, I, I remember sitting with Funk, and he was telling me, because he was in a wheelchair a lot of the Yes, yes. If you never seen him, this guy was in a wheelchair working for Disney Hollywood uh, Records. Yes. And um, he was telling me, you got to listen to this. And then I remember he told me in... Uh, I, I know he said he took you guys to New York. Yep. I, I'm not sure if it was the first time you guys have been to New York or not. But he goes, I took him to New York. He goes, and they walk in. He goes, and everybody just kind of kind of steps <laughs> back. You know, he goes, yeah, they've never seen anything like that. And I was like, bro, yeah. I know who they, believe me. You know, but see, he, yeah, not to cut you, but see, a lot of people don't know that for Booya. So us coming to New York, you know, we had to, we had to earn our stripes. And yes. when I say that, See, we were signed on uh, Fourth and Broadway, and then yes. at that time it was we was from the West Coast Island, and then they had you know what I'm saying, and the East Coast had theirs. Right. So you know what I'm saying they had a uh, you know this other group of us we battled, but we had you know New York for the first time was actually gonna see us. It, it was industrial, 
it was industrial party, you know what I'm saying? And they actually got to see us live because they never seen it. Man, was a live group going to come out here in New York and try to, you know, they just never seen that. But we went out there, you know, it was at the Ritz and we killed it, you know, and that's how we got our stripes, you know. Before that, then they flew us from there and that's how we did the Arsenio Hall show. That's dope, man. And yeah. a lot of people don't know who Arsenio Hall, Arsenio Hall was like the fucking man back then. Was the fucking man. If you made it on Arsenio Hall, everybody saw you. That's right. P period. <laughs> you know, man. That's where everybody got this shit from. Exactly. <laughs> but, man, fuck, I got so much shit that I want to ask you, man. Uh, okay, you know, and, and I'm glad you said you had to earn your stripes because yeah. back then... The, the, the group was X-Clan. Now, remember, yeah. remember, X-Clan was, you know... Big, yeah. Well, we were actually on the same label. But yeah. on the real, we became friends because, man, they, you know, they, they had their whole thing of the African thing, you know, representing theirs. And they seen, oh, we were on some gangster shit with the county jackets, with the brands. Yes. But we became family. But when we actually did the show, man, they was like, motherfucker, <laughs> what the fuck is this? And then right at the top of the booth right there, and uh, you got to remember, this is at the Ritz, the famous Ritz. And right at the top, they had all the, you know say Run DMC, every rapper to come in the day. And right after we did our show, they just all, they put their thumbs up, yeah, these motherfuckers, these motherfuckers kill that. We were like, and you know, Gangster Ritz, man, that's all I need to see. I'm good. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's how my, and a lot of people know that my brother Reed, that's how he was. As long as he was, because he was, Reed, my brother Reed, like I said, he was really on that gangster. He had a lot of love for his neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was really about that life. You know, and, you know, uh, his, like I said, he, 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 did, he did it. You know, for me to back him up, you know, I'm more of the hype man, and I used to see my brother rip the mic. Man, he used to kill it, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I love my brother, man. That's dope, man. That's you know, represent, dope. you know, represent Carson. Come on now, you know Absolutely, what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Like we used to say, you know, from the pineapple to the big apple, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, we gotta eat too. You know yeah, what I'm that's dope. <laughs> and 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 the reason why I say I'm glad you you said we had to earn our stripes was because a lot of people don't know that back then, yeah. uh, uh, 80s and early 90s, East Coast wasn't really showing the West Coast any True. kind of love. True. So you guys went over there and ripped it and earned yeah, your stripes. We had to earn it. And, you know, yeah. like I said, that changed my life. You know what I'm saying? Even just to, you know, man, you know, everything started in New York. That's where hip hop started. Yes. But to get the love and the feedback from all the, from the OGs out there, man, that just changed our life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, it, you know, yeah. you know, small town, uh, you know, from, from the city of Carson, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Still represented, you know? Yeah. But, so, uh, yeah. So, so just really quick, we got a few minutes before we go okay. to break, but I wanted to ask you something about the album too that Funk and Klein uh, was talking about. Uh, what, why was it never released, even though you said he passed away during... You, you know, you know the reason why, because we got put on the shelf because Island Records was getting uh, bought out by Polygram. Okay. It's the weirdest thing. So when you, when you get signed... And the Polygram buys out Island Records. Right. Chris Blackwell had no say so. Even though he loved Booyah Tribe, he couldn't say, but he goes, man, these are my boys. So later on, he ended up buying uh, Island Records. Then he called it Black Island, you know, because, you know, his name is, uh, you know, Chris Blackwell. Yeah. And then he changed it to Black Island. But see, that's why that album never, it never got put out. Hmm. But we're going to put it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Please let me know. Yeah. Let me know. Now. There's still people out there that buy hard copies, and I know that's a thing of the past. Do you guys ever plan on pressing up actual hard copies? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, okay. we got to keep it. You know. uh, I, I'll still buy them. You know, right. <laughs> I'll still buy them. Because that album number two is something that I've always told people yes. about. A lot of people never heard it, and I said, dude, I heard it, but it was just that one time, and that's the only memory that yes. I have. Yes. It's Funk and Klein sitting across from me, pressing play on a cassette, Man. and, you know, and, and then to hear that he passed away, I, I feel bad because he was a young guy. Yes. Like I said, he had a lot of influence, and in, in, you know, especially in the East Coast, like he, uh -huh. like he was huge. You know, his name was ringing. But right. For him to leave, you know, what I'm saying, leaving, you know, the East Coast to come out here and start, you know, like I said, it, it sadly happened. You know, what I'm saying, but yeah, man, he's, you know, I had a lot of love for Funkin' Klein. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Here's another one, uh, another uh, question that I rarely ever ask artists of today because obviously this magazine doesn't really exist anymore in hard copy form. Your first album, did it ever make the Source magazine? Uh, I don't know. It may be. Yeah. Okay. It's funny you said that, yeah. Because mine did, and I, I was so damn happy, man. <laughs> we got three and a half mics. Right, you know, right, right. Five was like a classic or whatever, but we got three and a half. <laughs> I was so happy. I still have my original uh, uh, copy, and it's funny you bring up X-Clan because they were on the cover. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Damn, man. We yeah. So, some history here. <laughs> yeah. 
come to find out we were label mates. That's so, right. <laughs> damn, I like that. Yeah, that was dope, man. So, okay, so now, uh, um, so the albums are, are, well, these, you said you got about eight or nine albums? Yeah, we got on, eight. You got eight of them. Yeah. Wow. You know, we got Muffy Lifestyle, you know what I'm saying, Doomsday. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. the Muffy Lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? This is a cold-ass album, you know what I'm saying? So, And, and now, as far as production-wise, who, who was doing all the production? Is it just, because uh, I know the first album was Tony. Yeah. After that, did you guys just started producing your own stuff, started bringing in outsiders? or? Um... Well, well we, we always had our brother Monster, you know what I'm saying? He uh, was always a producer, you know what I'm saying? So, But collabing with, like, Red, Red was pretty much the quarterback, you know what okay. I'm saying? Like he'll he'll do the ad libs, he'll rap it, you know, he'll sing it, he'll tell it. He was just that's you know, Bo was just talented, you know. Right, right. So, you know, um, but like I said, we had that, you know, that you know, you know, our our you know, how we collab. But uh, yeah, uh, Monster O was our producer. Yeah, okay. My brother Monster O. That'll work his way. Shout out to Monster O. What's up? Got yes, him? sir. Murder yes. one. Booyah. Booyah. So, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take a 10-minute break. We're going to come back uh, with D-Boy, and then we're going to bring you back, and we're going to wrap it up, and I'll start drinking with you at the end. <laughs> so, so we good. Okay, everybody, once again, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that Booyah's in the motherfucking building, and we'll be Booyah. back with Cobra. Hey, how you doing? It's me, Little Easy E, Eric Wright, and a lot of you know me, know I like to smile. And to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Occidental. That's Occidental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Occidental and Hollywood. Check them out. ¿Qué pasa, mi gente? El hey, padrino, Mellow Man Ace right here. This is my new joint, Walk Talk, featuring my boy Young Quicks, Oxnard's finest. Ya tu sabes, mi gente. Sigan representando real hip hop. Aquí solamente. Keep it locked. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Ms. Gatis, all the way from NYC. Check out my latest EP, available now on all digital platforms. Back in Cali, baby, that's right. Check me out, Ms. Gatis, at YouTube, at Instagram, at Spotify, all over. You already know it's NYC, baby. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks. Just want to let you know I got a new single out. Down three times, down three X, featuring Baby Bash. Everywhere music is sold and streamed today. Go cop it, add me to your playlist. Let's get it. Down, down, down. Since 2006, Delta 9 THC has been supplying the Los Angeles Harbor area with premium quality cannabis products for both medical and recreational users. Delta 9 is located in Wilmington, California, next to the Port of Los Angeles, just a short drive from Long Beach and South Bay cities. Home to the Pistol Peaks brand, you can expect premium indoor cannabis flower that is locally grown, lab tested, and safe for your consumption. Our highly trained team of cultivators ensures we rotate only the best award-winning genetics in every jar, including our top-selling ETOG. Here at Delta 9, you can find your favorite industry-leading cannabis brands and a wide selection of cannabis products ranging from cannabis flower, vape pens, edibles, concentrates, topical and tinctures, and more. Come visit us in the city of Wilmington at 824 East Anaheim Street. Mention Tony A and get three-eighths of our Pistol Peaks flower for $100. That's three exotic eighths for $100 with tax included. You can't miss. Come to Delta 9 today. Shop legal, shop local, shop Delta 9. Visit delta9thc.com. Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this yard. Hey, what it do? It's your boy Cap G. Subscribe to Rodian Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, sir. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is King T chilling on Rhodium Radio. Tune in, subscribe for every Sunday and Wednesday. Fucking with my man Tony Yang, the wizard.
West up, this Lazy Dub, and you're tuned in to Rhodium Radio right here with Tony A. the Wizard on every Sunday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. Make sure you like and subscribe that. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here at Local Negro, Tony A., Rhodium Radio. Tune in. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy MTO right here with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Lovely, and I'm right here at Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and check him out every Sunday and Wednesday. It's Nina Beretta with Rhodium Radio and Tony A. the Wizard. Tune in Sundays and Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? This is the Puppet Master chilling with El Triste. Follow and subscribe to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashidi Harper, director, executive producer from Hip Hop Uncovered. And I'm here at the Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Stay tuned. Coming at you live through the Harbor area, you got MC Poncho, the number one Sancho, and you're checking out Rhodium Radio with my man, Tony A., the Wizard. Check it out. What's up? This is Ronan Gray. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A., the Wizard. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. What up? This is Mr. D over at Rhodium Radio with my homeboy, Tony A., the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, y'all? This is Uncle Spliff, man, from Spliff DTV. Y'all need to tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rhodium Radio with my homie, Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, you're tapping in with the Spliff City Hustlers. This is Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. the Wizard. Motherfucking legend. Make sure you fucking like, subscribe, share, do all that shit. Yo, it's your boy Troublesome Man, TM Gang Live in Full Effect. Here at Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A. the Wizard. You know what it is. Wow. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Ernie G in the place to be. I'm chilling here at Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A. the motherfucking wizard. Bought those locals forever. Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy Young Hype here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. Yo, what's up? It's Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Big Citric, inviting everybody to tune in and subscribe to Tony Vision, Rodeo Radio, with your host, Tony A. the Wizard. What's happening? It's your boy Bobby Castro, and I'm here at Rodeo Radio with the homie Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the shit. What's good, y'all? Eric Bobo from the mighty Cypress Hill, chilling right here on Rodeo Radio with the homeboy Tony A. the Wizard. That's right. Hey everybody, this is Cliff Ritchie, and I'm here on Rhodium Radio with 28 The Wizard. What's cracking it, y'all? I'm a crazy boy, Blue Rain Music. You tuned in to Rhodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday, right here. What's up, everybody? This is Dali C, the Trap Queen, and you guys are listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you guys tune in. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Bobby B, and you're live with Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. 1212 coming to you live from the Harbor area. DJ Ralph from Rockin' Beats with my man, Tony A, rocking the SP 1200. Let's go. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Yeller coming straight out of Compton Rhodium Radio with my boy Tony A. the Wizard. Check him out. Hey, what's up? It's your girl Men's Got this from NYC. I'm Namasaki with Tony A. the Wizard at Rhodium Radio. You already know I have to bring the NYC love. Hey, shout out to all of you guys. Hey, what's cracking? It's that guilty one. You're tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard live every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe. Ah. What's going on? It's Hazard. You are tuned in with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe on YouTube. 
Yo, yo, this is your boy Invincible, and you are watching the Rhodium Radio Show with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you're tuned in and watching. Ooh, ah. What's up, guys? This is Isabella Stoll, and you're tuning in with Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. What's up, guys? It's your girl, J-Rocks. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with your host, Tony A, the Wizard. I'll make sure to tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yo, what's up? This is Jose Homicide. You're hanging out at Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A, the Wizard. Like and subscribe. Welcome back, everyone, to Rhodium Radio, episode 221. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it with my very special guest, D-Boy. You know what? I, I almost said of Booyah Tribe, <laughs> but I, I had to be careful. So how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm glad you're here, man. I'm glad I'm here, too. You know, now, uh, a lot of people may not know, but I was just interviewing your pops. Right. Yeah, okay. my pops right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now, you are now in the rap game yourself. Yeah, I'm upcoming. Yeah, the next generation. Right. And that's what we want to talk about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So first and foremost, couple of uh, easy questions. Where, where were you raised at, man? Carson. Ca oh, born and raised? Born and raised Carson. Went elementary, Dolores, Carnegie Middle. But I ended up right here in Benny High. Okay, uh, <laughs> how did that happen? Like, how come you didn't go to Carson High? My mom didn't want me to go to Carson High because of them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But, you know, the apple don't fall from, fall far from the tree. You know, I was still following their footsteps even when I went to Banning, you know. Oh, okay. Did you play any ball there? Yeah, I played ball over there. Okay. I think that's when Ferragamo was still there, wasn't he? Yeah, Ferragamo was still there. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. A lot of people don't don't realize the, the rich history of the 80s, especially when Banning and Carson were going wars yeah. in, on the field, you know. I mean, so, even, even now it's still like that. You know, it's not as... Not as big as it was during y'all y'all days, but right. you know, you know, they still had the little tensions. Even right. when I was going to, to banning, they you know, they still had the little rivalry going on. Okay. You know? And are you, are you is it safe to say you're a Raiders fan too? No, nah, I'm a Niner fan. That's that's funny, huh? Right. Well, uh, how, how does your dad accept you in the, into the house? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, come my, my my mom's whole side of the family they're from San Francisco. Oh. So you know, I was always going around them and you know. They turned me out to the Niners side, you know. Okay, okay. Is it safe to say you're a Laker and Dodgers fan as well? Yeah. All I'm right. I'm a Laker fan for sure. Uh, other than football, did you play any other sports growing up? No. Nah. None? No. Nah. Okay, did you ever uh, pop or break like your dad did? No, nah, man, I wasn't blessed with uh, his skill set, you know. But, uh, you know, I was picking up, like, uh, more of the rap scene. I was a bit really influenced from like Monk Red and them, these guys when I was growing up. Okay. You know, I used to come in the room, Monk would be, you know, eating his eggs, you know. He always had to have the eggs on Monk Red, but he'd be having his, his tablet out writing. You know, I just, right. I just, you know, I was like a sponge soaking right. up all that coming up, you know what I'm saying? That's dope. And I used to, that shit used to be so dope to me, like, you know, how he used to put all these shit together, all these words and make it rhyme, you know what I mean? Right, right. Kind of okay. made me like, you know, let me try to think outside the box one time, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Now, now, now let me ask you this, because you pretty much already answered it, but I, I have to ask it anyways. Growing up in a, in a home with your mother and your father, what type of music did they play around you as a kid growing up? I would listen to Booyah Tribe with them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. You know, they, they would bang. I mean, my dad picked me up from school or something, or I'm with Pops, or I'm with the uncles, or whatever. They playing their music. 
Okay. So I, you know, I, I knew the, I knew the songs before they were even released. You know. Right, right, you know, right. I'm over here rapping with all, you know, all, all my first cousins. So, so, yeah. So, so going to banning, did you ever use that? Like, you know, my dad's booyah tribe. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I never liked nobody to know that. And, and why is that? You know, cause I, I didn't like that attention. Like, oh, that's Cobra Sun or. Or that's Booyah Tribe son, because you know at the end of the day I'm my own man, you know. Right. So I didn't I didn't want nobody to make me feel special just because I'm somebody's son. Right. I'm like, no, I'm I do my own thing. Like nothing, you know. I love my love my dad and all that, but if they knew, they knew. If it's not, I'm never I was never gonna bring it up. Like, oh yeah, do you know who my pops is, or do you know? Nah, you know I'm I'm you know I do my own thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Now, uh, um, coming from a music oriented family, did you uh, play any instruments growing up? I did it. I didn't play no instruments growing up. You, you know what, man? I wish my parents would have put. We were just all young freestyling, trying to put rhymes together like they was doing. You know. Uh huh. So. Okay. You know, like, like not just me. Like all my all my first cousins, they know how to rap too. You know, if if if, if I wasn't doing it, they could have been in the same position as me. You know, I just I just ended up taking it and running with it. You know, I wish I would have started a long time ago. You know, I kind of started late in throughout my years. Yeah. I was just too busy in the backyard with the homies rapping. You know what I'm saying? But right. Till one day, my homeboy, uh, they call him uh, Young Down. He was like, "Hey, man, come come hop on this track." You know, I'm like, "I don't know, man. I don't think I don't know if the people are gonna feel it." You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't, you know, that's that. Uh, what is it? Uh, you, you, I just wasn't feeling it. But then I was like, "Man, fuck it. I mean, you know, might as well yeah. give it a try." You know, it's called "Think It Over." Uh -huh. That was the first song I ever did. And, and how old were you when you did that? I was probably like, man, this is like a couple, it wasn't even too long ago. Probably like 20, 22. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, was that the first time you started writing or were you no, writing I was, prior? I was always, I was always writing. I, okay. I had like all, a lot of my lyrics that I'm putting on to these songs now, Uh huh. I've had it for years. You feel me? Yeah. It's just these lyrics, I, all my homeboys, they know these lyrics because I was already rapping it to them. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. But now I'm just like, well, shit, if, if people are feeling these these lyrics that I've been had for years, you know, well, let me throw it on the track and let me see if they're going to feel it. You feel me? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, around how old were you, would you say that you actually began writing? I want to say like middle school, like I probably like sixth, seventh grade. You know, I'm like, you know, I wasn't good at the time. Right. <laughs> you know, but right. I was just, you know, experimenting, you know, freestyling or, you know, trying to trying to put rhymes together and whatnot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So now, you you go to the studio, your, your, uh, what was that, your homeboy's pad? It was at my homeboy's pad, right in his living room. Okay, so you drop this 16, uh -huh. plays it back, you hear it, what do you think? Man, I was just like, man, that's crazy, I ain't gonna lie, like it sounds hard, but yeah, at, after we did it, it's like, it sounds hard to us, I, I hope that y'all not gassing me up, you feel me? I hope I hope y'all not just like, yeah it's hard and we let it out and man that motherfucker son I'm like <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know what uh, uh, man we dropped it and you know I got a lot of good feedback and then since that song dropped when my homeboy down me and him I was like man you know if they feeling this you know might as well just see how it go, how it would go if I keep going and since till now. Every 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 song that I've been dropping, I've it's been getting more and more better reviews and more and more people hitting me up, you know, from everywhere. And I'm this is shocking to me. I'm like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. damn, I didn't know I'm getting this much love like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even nowhere big like that. But I'm just saying, like, the amount like the amount of people that are coming in and hitting me up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, that's cool. Like, that's horrible. Like, I didn't know, you know, people hitting me up. Like, man, finally get to hear some, uh, you know, like a West Coast type of beat vibe. And, you know right. what I'm saying? And keep it West Coast because how I see with a lot of the artists these days now, it's like they trying to sound like everybody else. Like Detroit and the East Coast. Like, and I don't hear nobody sounding like where we came from. Yeah. This West Coast shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I have to agree with you. And I'm just like, damn, Nobody's nobody's on the same same tip as me. Y'all trying to trying to have their have their uh you know their their rhythm, their their rhymes, their flow. Yeah. I'm like, we grew up off of, you know, you know, I grew up off Booyah, you know, West Side Connection, the Dog Pound, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I don't hear that sound no more. You know what I'm saying? I don't hear that sound at all. And this is this is the land of where gangster music was made. And yeah. why why are we not continuing that, you know? You're right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like <laughs> and I, I have to agree with you on that. Uh, I don't know where it all went wrong. I, I know people like to say this. Well, music changed. Music evolved. Okay, cool. I'll give you that. I I am 
a firm believer that I think music was changed on us. For an example, if I had the juice to go into a radio station and say, hey, we're going to have a meeting. We're no longer going to play none of this, you know, West Coast G-Funk shit. We're going to play just trap now. We're going to change everything. We're yeah. going to change the culture. We're going to change the way people dress. We're going to change, you know, men are going to have purses now and whatever. And, and all through music, you know, all through music, I think the music was changed. I don't think that it evolved to what it is right now. Right. Okay. That's just me because let me just give you one quick story. Uh, I want to say about three years ago, I was at a club in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona with Quick and my boy High C. And they're playing all of these trap songs that I don't even fucking know. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't even fucking know. They just sound like noise to me. And then out of fuck, and, and, but the, the dance floor is packed. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the DJ throws on California Love, Tupac, and Dr. Dre. And for some fucking reason, the crowd erupts. And yeah. more people go to the dance floor. I got goosebumps just listening to that shit that I turned around and looked at my boy quick and I said, bro, w what was wrong with this music? Why did we have to change it? And he goes, I don't know, bro. It you know, it's probably just like some cultural, you know, the culture type things. Like like how I feel about the trap music and all that. Like it's cool. Like, yeah, they're they going to be making bangers and whatever, right. but it's not going to last. You know what I'm saying? It'll be a, it'll be a hit for like a, like, like a good couple months and then nobody's ever gonna play that song again you know what right. i'm saying just like how you brought up the they played the california love yeah that th those are classics Classic. you know what i'm saying and that's some west coast shit that's what i'm that's what i'm trying to be on i'm trying to make classics to where damn play that song and it, damn that shit's still hard you get what i mean yeah not like yeah. not just a one-time thing because these beats they're 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 not you know i don't you know i don't I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go towards that way with the trap music. You know? right. I'm, I'm going to keep it to what I know. And my, I'm not trying to sound like anybody else. Right. Or, you know, I'm trying to be myself. You know what I'm saying? Or what right. I was raised off of. Yeah. They played California Love. And right after they played that, that song, uh, uh, what was it called? What Would You Do If You Can Get With A Dog? Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that, yeah. that shit gave my ass goosebumps. Yeah. I haven't heard this motherfucker yeah. in a minute. But that shit was just banging in yeah. there, bro. But you, but you know what? Let's be honest. Uh, uh those tracks, man, like bring, especially if you're from the West Coast, they bring something out of you, bro. It's yeah, like, off top. Right when you hear that, man, you, you you already hyped up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> especially if you're from the land, you know? Yes, there, yes. There ain't no doubt about that for sure. Now, are you a fan of East Coast hip hop? Honestly, like, uh, like, yeah. Like, I like Biggie. Okay. Like, as for, but, you know, like, uh, Bone Thugs, was, would that be considered East Coast? I think they're, or, or, yeah, or, or Cleveland, or, or where they're from. Oh, that's uh, West. Okay. But, yeah, you know, like, not too much. Because I didn't really know too much about them growing up. Okay. Like when I was when I was growing up, they was banging on a lot of their stuff. You feel me? They, they when when we kids we listened to them. They talking about Tupac and you know all kinds of right. West Coast artists, and that's all the sound that I was hearing. You know. Right. So yeah, pretty much that's you know I'm 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 really a West Coast baby. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. And that's what that's my whole sound. Like nothing, nothing against them. You know what I'm saying? That's just I like I like the vibe that we we give off. Okay. You know uh, as far as West Coast uh, rappers or groups, give me your like your top five if you can. Um, e e e you know, it, it doesn't matter what era, the new stuff, the old stuff. Like, I, honestly, like it was probably like your era, but I used to bang this, bang all like I used to listen to uh, uh, DJ Quick. Growing in, I'm in Carnegie with my MP3 on before they even had anything. You know what I'm saying so, right. uh, damn. Uh, I mean, I, I, I was listening to Nip a lot too. These guys, for sure, I, I know all the albums from these guys. Uh, the Dog Pound, the Dog Pound was horror. Okay, like all them beats, that was straight West Coast stuff. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, uh, damn, that's about four, four right there. Give yeah. me at least one or two more. Uh, uh, you mentioned Pac. I don't know if you would consider him Pac for sure. Okay, for sure, all the Death Row drain all them. It was horror. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, you mentioned. Everyone pretty much from my era was from the nineties except off of the except of Nipsey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Why why do you think it is more that you gravitate more to the to the nineties, you know, G G shit than today's music? Cause I, 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 I was around a lot of funk. You know what I mean? Okay. I was a lot of, around a lot of gangster rap. I was a lot of I was around growing up or around a lot of Oh geez, these guys and their homies. You know what I'm saying? I was I was in the mix. Right. I was a kid watching them, what they're listening to, and then you know, I'm, me and my cousins, we're like, man, that's hard. You see what they're listening to? Like, uh -huh. oh, let, let's, let's 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 see what they're talking about. Let's let's hear what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Okay. Now, did, did you ever have the opportunity as a youngster? When I say youngster, like as a child, to go to your dad's shows? You know what? Uh, 
I don't think uh, I went to a show. I think we was a little bit too young. Okay. But we did get to go on a tour bus with them one time, and that was hard. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that, that'll, hard. that'll work. That'll yeah. work. Because I know sometimes as a youngster, you carry those memories with you forever. Yeah. You know? And, and I went to a couple, like, I went to a couple, like, events with them for sure. Uh-huh. With my pops, I was a little kid, though. You know what I'm saying? That okay, now cool. I'm going to ask you an honest question. Was there ever any track that you were like, you know what, Dad? I'm not feeling that one right there. Man, honestly, I, I nah. I okay. feel like every track that they that they came with, they showed us as kids. We was amazed. Like, damn, you see them? You know what I mean? That's horror. Look at Uncle Red doing his thing, and Uncle Red used to break down everything to us. Like, oh, you know what this mean right here? You know what I'm saying? Right. He'll break down his whole thing. Like, some of some of his lyrics, some people to this day won't even know what he's talking about. But me and my cousin know what he's talking about. You know what, right. what I'm saying? Because he'll right. be like, yeah, this means this. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, that's horror. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> you know what dope, saying? man. That's dope. Now, as far as your music is concerned. Uh, um, when did you, I know when you said a few years back when you went to your buddy's house in his living room and you recorded that track, uh, what came next after that? Did you decide like, you know what, I think I want to take this serious? Or did you wait a while or nah, what, what right took place? after that, like right after I did the Think It Over, I was like, you know what, because I, we didn't, that was just a track I did and then after that I did the song called Respected for Life. That's what kind of like got me a little buzz, like, you know, okay. as far as L.A., to okay. where everybody's tuning in because they're like, damn, he's going crazy. But, like, uh, yeah, after we did the Think It Over, I was like, man, you know what? Uh, let me try, let me, let me, uh, let me try to bring myself out. Like, uh, let me, uh, do my first single. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, uh, I did the Respected for Life. There's no hook. I just gassed the whole song. No, sure. And I, and I flipped the, I wanted to, to everybody to know, hey, this is D Boy 223 coming out of Carson on some West Coast ass shit. So I, I flipped, uh, um, damn, what's the song by uh, uh, Connect, Connected for Life by uh, by uh, Dub C and them. Mm-hmm. So I flipped that and I just gassed the whole song. That's when Estevan and all them, they start tuning, tapping in with me, like, oh, this is Cobra Sun. Like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I do my thing too. So when everybody heard me, like, man, he's going wild on that thing. You know what I'm saying? He's going yeah. crazy on there. So that's right when I dropped that video and I got, I'm like, damn, all right, this is my first music video I'm I'm ever finna drop. I'm like, damn, let me see. I'm either going to stop doing music after this or I'm going to keep going. Right, right, right. If if there's more bad comments than good comments, oh, yeah, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. (laughs) Don't don't keep going. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Wait, you 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 should be real with yourself. Yeah, you got to be real, like. Believe the comments, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, the motherfuckers in the comments, they 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 ruthless. ruthless. <laughs> they ruthless on that internet, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. So yes. you're gonna find out right there and there. Hey homie, it's this is not for you, dog. You need to hang it up right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, well some of those comments you gotta have thick skin, bro. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Yeah, because I've known dudes fuck that have literally like called me up and literally cried about some of the comments that people wrote about them. I go, bro, just... I ain't finna cry over no comment. I'ma just be like, damn, that's what it is. Shit, I guess that's what it is. It ain't what it is, then. I mean, I gotta go. <laughs> I ain't finna be no crybaby over here. You know, it is what it is, but... You know, but besides that, I got a lot of good feedback. And it was like, man, you whore. Like, man, keep on dropping shit. Keep okay. on keep on going. Keep it so, like... Ever since that, I just been dropping single after single. My new my new song coming out, uh, everybody, they waiting, they waiting for it to drop. It's called Mr. Whoop. Uh... Uh, the original song was called Mr. Groove by One Way. Right. And I flipped that beat and I called it Mr. Whoop because, you know, that's where my section where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I changed it up, called it Mr. Whoop, and I went, I'm going crazy on it. So I'm about to drop that this Sunday. Uh, after, so, I, yeah, after that, I'm going to drop an album. Dope, dope. Yeah. Okay. So at what point did you tell your dad, Dad, you know what, I'm going to start rap or I'm going to start doing this? Or did he already somewhat know? He 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 knew I had rhymes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Cause you know I'll be I'll be flowing. You know what I mean? I'll be I'll be go chopping going. But then I ain't gonna lie. I know he was hearing a lot of the songs. And then when I when I showed him the Mr. Whoop, I think that's the one that opened his eyes. Like, damn man, you is whore. Like you 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 riding the wave on that one. I'm like, man, I'll be, you, you didn't believe me? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, man. That's yeah. dope. Okay, so you dropped uh, the second single. That was the one that you pretty much said. You know what? If they don't like it, then I, I gotta go. Okay, but you said the response was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I wouldn't have uh, dropped some if I, uh, if I honestly felt like, man, I'm not gonna lie. That shit whack. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, if you doubted yourself. Yeah, like, cause, but I feel like 
me honestly, I'm I'm confident in the lyrics that I've been coming up with. Like in in uh, you know, I'm like, you know what? I ain't gonna lie, my lyrics is too hard for this. This they gonna feel what I'm saying. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. They they gonna know like he not he not lying about what he's talking about because only the the real gonna know what you're talking about right. when you when you when you speaking it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. Uh, it, I didn't have too much less confidence starting off. It was just like, we're we going to see what happens. Okay. You know so what I'm saying? You, so you dropped that video, and what came next? Walk us through le uh, leading up to up until Sunday. So uh, I dropped that, um, and I just let that simmer. Okay. So you feel me? I let that yeah. simmer. I let my views get up because nobody know, nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew that, like, who this I just dropped my first my first visual, my first that's basically me bringing myself out. Nobody knew who I was, you know what I'm saying? Right. They just you know, I dropped it and I let it simmer so people could re keep resharing and then like, all right, now they're like, "Man, he's going crazy," you know? And then it's, it's starting to reach out to all different places now. Right. So then after that, um I dropped a song called West Side Olympics. Funny story about that one, uh, whoever's listening and 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 be following up on me. The West Side Olympics, I did that in my homeboy's living room. With no engineer, no nothing. That's all raw. No shit. We came back from the. We came back from the. We came back from a spot. You know, we were drinking. We in the living room. He got a bougie ass uh, studio set up. Bougie as fuck. My homie T Stone, man. T Stone, what's up, bro? You remember when we did that? But uh, we was in the living room. We was fading. He's like, man, uh, put the beat on. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. And we did the West Side Olympics. I did that whole thing in one take, and I dropped it. No shit. So I had no engineer. I had no ad libs. I had no no nothing. Just, just straight raw. Just, just straight raw and uncut. Nobody even know that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I just dropped it, and people people was, they was messing with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh damn, that's crazy as hell. You know what I'm saying? I, wow. I just dropped it just to put more content out, and I wasn't know wasn't knowing that people was really gonna feel that song. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm like, damn, that's horror. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now filming your first visual, how was that for you? I ain't gonna lie. So. Whoever that was at my first visual knows that shit was a, uh, that shit was going down in history. I had so many people pop out from my video. It was crazy. It was crazy. I, I, I we had it at Callis Park in Carson. Okay. And I had all the bloods and domus and you know they all popped out from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? We was deep. We was deep. We we had it at Callis and then I rented out a warehouse, and then after that we just had a big ass party. That's dope, man. We had a big ass party. That shit lasted all the way to like the the warehouse that I rented. It was private property, so the police couldn't mess with it, even though it was all gang members. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So man, I had I had probably like man, I had so many people. Whoever that was there, they know that shit was lit. You know what I'm saying? We had a whole we had a whole damn club going on basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what was the name of the song so they can look it up? It's called Respected for Life. Okay. Uh, uh, D Boy Two Two Three. It's on YouTube right now. Uh, yeah, that one was crazy though. Next time you film a video, that sounds like fun. I want to go. Man, man. Lot, yeah, a lot of people be telling me, like, man, your videos be going crazy. I'm like, man, good looking now. But <laughs> yeah, the first one, the first one, man, that 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 first one did it. I ain't even topped the first video yet, how many, like how crazy it was. Okay, and but having the camera film you, were you used to that already or not really? You know what? Uh I, I didn't I, I didn't feel too uh I, I I it was cool. It was I didn't have no kind of you know, I was just uh -huh. used to, to just being me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just okay. being being myself. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's me on camera. I'm okay. not I'm not faking my moves or nothing. You know, that's me. That's me in the flesh. I'm doing my thing. That's that's who I am. Okay. Now, so now, what comes next after that? Because I know you said you got something dropping Sunday. Yeah. So all I've been all I've been dropping all singles. the way up to now is all singles. Okay. So I've been doing all singles, all visuals. So now I did the West Side Olympics. I did the hit them up. I don't know. Uh, that's the one uh, Estevan came through. He came, he snapped photos of us and all that. It was okay. hard. Uh, that was a song that I flipped from Gangsta Red and Mossberg, Rest in Peace, and, and the tribe called Hit Em Up. Okay. So I basically kind of did that song as a tribute to them. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So uh, that was that was my most recent one. Now this next one that's coming out is uh, Mr. Woop. Okay. Is there a visual for that one yet? Yes. I okay. mean... It's dropping this Sunday, so I just be getting oh, everybody okay. previews. They like, man, hurry up and drop it. I'm just like, you know, I'm just trying to make sure everything right before I drop this thing. You know what I'm saying? That's dope, man. Yep, yep. Do you have the? Well, you gotta have the mentality of like, this next one's gotta be better. This next one's gotta be. Better. Oh yeah. So like, that's my whole thing. Like, okay, I did crazy on that one. I can't go backwards. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. You you 
you you take two steps back, you losing. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I'm yes. like, nah, you gotta you gotta if you're gonna go crazy, you gotta go crazy on every video and every song. So every time I do a song, if I feel like so every time I'm listening to a song, it's like, damn, or I try to put my my myself into other other uh, people with different lifestyles perspective, like, damn, how would you feel or or how would I be listening to if I was him? Would you can you rock to this? Can you say, damn, this is tight? Right. Or damn, uh, damn, I never heard that before. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I try right. to I try to go. So I try to go with that. I mean, a lot of the music that I've been doing recently is is, is really gangster music. Right. But that's not what I that's not the only type of music that I want to be known as. Right. I wanna I'm gonna start doing a whole lot of different uh, uh, components, different okay. genres. Oh, not, yeah. not genres. I'm a, it's gonna be rap, but it's not just gonna be talking about gangster, right. my, my gangster lifestyle. Right. You know, uh, uh, rap is an art form. You, you feel me? Right. So it's like, uh, if you can't switch it up, then you're not really an artist, are you? You right. know what I'm saying? No, you're not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, uh, I know a lot of people, they just see me as a gangster rapper for right now, but I'm gonna switch it up uh coming up you feel me yeah yeah so like you know i'm just like i'm i'm ready to like surprise a few people coming Dope. up you know what i'm saying okay now as a producer as a dj uh i'm gonna ask you as far as the production side are are you teaming up with different producers do you have just one producer are you doing your own stuff so i started off with my boy he was doing a lot of producing for me uh my boy yon he's hard Okay. But he, you know, he kind of started doing his thing. So, uh, you know, but yeah, I've been, since then, I, ever since I started dropping Respected for Life and all that, uh, actually, Polly Boy, he did the Respected for Life. I don't know you, did, you know who that is. He did that uh, Yup by E-40. Okay. So he, he, he was plugged in with my homeboy, Wicked. So he's, he's a rapper out of our section. That's how I met him okay. before I even started rapping. You feel me? Okay. So when, when he found out I started rapping, I told him to flip this beat for me. That's when you feel me, they're like, okay, yeah. so you drop a hard song, respect it for life, but now you got this big, big, big time producer dude. Like, I'm, you know, he, he, he's, he's hard. He's yeah. a poly boy, so now everybody's looking at that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So ever since I had that, I had all kinds of producers come through and, and, and wanted to work with me. Okay. So like uh, one that I'm working with right now, my boy June out of the Trio Click Beats, he's hard. He's been doing a lot for me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who you, if you know who Cypress Mourinho is. No. Uh, he's like a DJ too, but he's a producer. Okay. I just started doing, I just, uh, he works with a lot of people in LA. Okay. You feel me? He's, he's hard. But uh, I just started working with him. I got, I got like five tracks coming up with him that he, that, that we got lined up. So Dope. there's a lot, there's a lot that I'm lining up right now to come. You feel right. me? Okay, okay. And as far as like, you you, you know, one thing it's it's kind of like it's a it's kind of a, a lost art for a lot of today's rappers, at least in my opinion. You know what I don't see anymore? A rapper with a DJ, and and, and I think the reason why is because they're not giving artists today long enough sets to have a DJ behind them. Right. You know. Uh, like for an example, you just told me recently, you just had a show recently. Yeah, I, just had, how, I did the show. How long was your set? It wasn't that long. Okay, well, yeah. 10, 15 minutes maybe? Yeah. Okay, see, that's not even long. It'll probably take 15, 10, 15 minutes for him to set up his turntables and his you know, yeah. mixer. Yeah. So I, I get that aspect, but I like to see shows where the guy- if Yeah, because that, that's, you know, that's what makes the, the show more of an event, you feel yes. me? Yes. When everybody's rocking out, you know what I'm saying? Not just right. one person just playing songs or the thing, you know what I'm saying? Right, so now they give you the mic, go up on stage, you go up there for your first show. Was it nerve wracking? I ain't gonna lie, yeah, like you know, cause look, when I went up there, uh, this recent one, these aren't my fans, and again, I'm I'm upcoming, so these people they're already a fan of my homeboy Jay Worthy from uh, uh from Compton, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not knowing. I'm like, man, you know, you don't know what they 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 hear from him, right? You know what I'm saying? They, I'm like, man, I don't know if they gonna feel it, but man, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, right. I ain't running now. What's happening? So, you know, I get on stage and I'm, you know, it was a little nervous, but I, I be nervous and then it should just go away. You feel me? I'm just like, hey, it is what it is. That's just how I am. Right. But uh, yeah, I went on stage and I started doing my thing and then, you know, they listening and they just looking and they're like, and then I started getting these, like, you know what I'm saying? They start bobbing their head. That's how I'm like, okay, they feeling it. Right. So that's right. how I know the crowd is not on something like, you know, when the crowd just still, you know, you're doing something wrong. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? They just, you know, but you know, they start. I start going crazy and then they're like, then they all start rocking with me. So I'm like, okay, so now I know 
Now they know who I am. Yes. Now they know that I'm that I'm hard. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So that's you know that's what I liked about it. That's dope. That's after that I'm like okay, now I know I could do a lot of shows. Yes. So imagine it how I'm going to rock the stage when I throw my show, which yes. I'm going to throw this summer. You know what I'm saying? Oh hell yeah! yeah I'm throwing my show this summer, and that's going to go crazy if, if 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 everybody's coming to see me this time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. One thing that I know for sure by LA fans, they're very hard to please. For sure, for sure. Prideful people. For sure. They could be loving your shit, but I'm not going to bob my head. Hell no, nah, that's just the pride <laughs> that we that we was, you know, built up with. Like, yeah, he whore, but I'm not going to let him know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of these people, they a lot of people, they, they probably don't even mess with me. They're like, you know, they probably go listen to my shit while they by themselves in their room. You know, they probably bob their head like, man, I ain't going to lie, this nigga whore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's dope, man. That's dope. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take a 10-minute break. We're going to come right back, and we're going to bring you and your pops all together, man. All right, it's good. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. You know, a lot of people don't even know that we work out at the same gym. We've seen each other plenty of times. Yeah, so. I know. I walked up here. I'm like, man, I've seen you before. You've been going to the gym, huh? <laughs> yeah. All good, everybody. So make sure you call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that D-Boy's in the motherfucking building. We'll be back. How you doing? It's me, Little Easy E, Eric Wright. And a lot of you know me, know I like to smile. And to thank for my beautiful smile, I want to thank Oxydental. That's Oxydental Hollywood. So check this out. For all your dental needs, be sure to come to them because they'll be there to take care of you. That's Oxydental in Hollywood. Check them out. Since 2006, Delta 9 THC has been supplying the Los Angeles Harbor area with premium quality cannabis products for both medical and recreational users. Delta 9 is located in Wilmington, California, next to the port of Los Angeles, just a short drive from Long Beach and South Bay cities. Home to the Pistol Peaks brand, you can expect premium indoor cannabis flower that is locally grown, lab tested, and safe for your consumption. Our highly trained team of cultivators ensures we rotate only the best award-winning genetics in every jar, including our top-selling ETOG. Here at Delta 9, you can find your favorite industry-leading cannabis brands and a wide selection of cannabis products ranging from cannabis flower, vape pens, edibles, concentrates, topical and tinctures, and more. Come visit us in the city of Wilmington at 824 East Anaheim Street. Mention Tony A and get three eighths of our Pistol Peaks flower for $100. That's three exotic eighths for $100 with tax included. You can't miss. Come to Delta 9 today. Shop legal, shop local, shop Delta 9. Visit delta9thc.com. Que pasa mi gente? El padrino, Mellow Man Ace right here. This is my new joint, Walk Talk, featuring my boy Young Quicks, Oxnard's finest. Ya tu sabes, mi gente. Sigan representando real hip hop aquí solamente. Keep it locked. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Ms. Gatis, all the way from NYC. Check out my latest EP, available now on all digital platforms. Back in Cali, baby, that's right. Check me out, Ms. Gatis, at YouTube, at Instagram, at Spotify, all over. You already know it's NYC, baby. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks. Just want to let you know, I got a new single out, Down Three Times, Down 3X, featuring Baby Bash. Everywhere music is sold and streamed today. Go cop it. Add me to your playlist. Let's get it. Down, down, down.
What's up with it, dog? It's West Coast Gilly on Rodeo on Radio with the legend Tony A. the Wizard on Tony Vision. You know what it is, West Coast to the fullest. Believe that. What's up, everybody? This is Stefan Orrier listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, what up? It's your boy Doughboy Tony. You're tuned into Rodium Radio with West Coast legend Tony A. the Wizard. What up? It's your boy Lottie the G, straight out of Santa Ana, CA, and we right here live in the mix with the West Coast legend Tony A. the Wizard on Rodium Radio, Tony Vision on YouTube. Yo, what's up, world? This is Cool 187, above the law in the building. And you tune in to Rodium Radio, where my man Tony Yeh, the wizard. Blah! What's up, this is Darren Vegas. You're on Rodium Radio with Tony Yeh, the wizard. Real West Coast hip-hop history right here. Yo, yo, what up? Sleepy Milo in the house, here at the Rodium Radio, with my boy Tony Yeh, the wizard, giving us our voice back. One of the realest motherfuckers I know. What's up, homie? Show me Frankie Quinones, a.k.a. Creeper from Cholo P. And you're listening to Tony A. the Wizard on Rodium Radio. That's what's up right there. Hey, yo, what's up, man? This is Kujo the Savage. I'm right here with Tony A. the Wizard, Rodium Radio. Everybody stay tuned, man. It's a motherfucking hit. Yo, shout out to Rodeum Radio, Tony A. The Wizard, your boy Pablo Nunez right here in the studio. Be about it, people. Que onda muchacho, ahí viene este miro. Kim with the Black Sick and the Negrito de Los Angelitos. And you're checking out that Rodeum Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Que o raza, this is Wicked from the Brown Side here on Rodeum Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. You know. What up, it's your homeboy Infinite TGM, chilling with Tony Hay, the wizard, on Rodeo Radio. Make sure you guys go check that out. What's good, what's good? It's your boy Spanky Loco, and you tuning in to Rodeo Radio with that motherfucking legend, Mr. Tony A. You know what time it is, West. Hey, what up, this is Rebello the Dome. And this is Dominator. And we came straight from the 805 ready to slap that motherfucking meat on your grill, bitch. Rhodium Radio, Central Coast Click. What up? What up with it? This your boy OG Magoo, Los Angeles Airbrush Artist, Big Chili on site with the homie Tony the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. All gas, no brakes. Let's get it. Man, you're now listening to LA Icon, man, right here live with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard on Rhodium Radio. What's up, what's up? This is Essa Daz, the Spanish Fly, with that reintroduction right here on Rhodium Radio with my boy, the Wizard, Tony A. Yeah, yeah, what up? It's the Spanish Fly MC, Big MOC, Mr. Mox MC, on the Rhodium Radio Show, baby, with Tony A, the Grand Wizard. Let's go. Johnny D, the Spanish Fly, on Rhodium Radio. Your one and only Theo with the Giant Cheeto. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Trish Toledo, and I'm over here with Tony A. at Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Blanca. Bobby D. presents Uncle Snoop's Army. Chilling right here at Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure you tune in Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. on YouTube. What up, West Coast and all hip-hop fans? This is your girl, Violet Brown. And I'm here with Tony A. the Wizard. Yo, this is Daniel Jones, the D to the motherfucking G Media Clips. Here with your boy, Tony A. the Wizard on the Rhodium Radio Show. Check, check, one, two, one, two. This is Roger Live, and you are in tune to the sounds of Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio West Coast.
Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 221. And uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it with Cobra and D-Boy. How you doing, my brothers? You guys good? Okay, I, I saw you were enjoying your son's interview, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now I got to bring out the tequila. You know what? I want to give a shout out real quick to Esteban because if I drink, I'll forget at the end. So I might as well just, Esteban, thank you. Much love, much respect for the connect. Thank you. Yeah, shout out to Esteban. Appreciate you, G. So, that's, that's the big homie right there with the Joker family. You know what I'm saying? Yes. The brand, you know what I'm saying? Big respect. Big respect to the family right there. Yeah, so I, I got to uh, at least uh, have a little toast going into the new year. Come on. So, uh, now I'm gonna be 100 with you. I won't swig this motherfucker to the head. I sip mine. So if you guys don't want to take yours to the head, I understand. Because if I take mine to the head, I'll start stuttering during the interview. <laughs> so, right, right. so let, let's do that. Here you go. But let us toast. And my toast is to a long and prosperous life. Let's go. Fuck it, I took it to the head. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't go out like that. You know, let, let, let me let me borrow the, the. What is that tequila? Yeah, that's all I drink now, man. I put the Hennessy down. Oh, for reals? Yeah, man. I can't drink the dark no more. I just drink straight clear, straight Why? tequila. I'm, a, I'm a, I drink Don Julio now. For no, 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 no shit. No more Hennessy. Oh, okay, he, he can't because he can't. You know, one time in Christmas we had, we had a battle. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh huh. You know, they thought that they could get me and uh, hey, other hey, uncle. Hey, T Rock, I know you're watching this, man. He, 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 these guys were cheating, man. They was pouring the, the drinks out the back. <laughs> <laughs> so we lined up ten bottles of Hennessy. You know what I'm saying? We okay. For one, two, three, four, right on the fifth, they were like. <laughs> they buckle you. Yeah, we got them. We got them. We got them. Ten bottles? Oh, yeah, ten we bottles. Went, we went to the store. We went, we went and grabbed ten Hennessy bottles, lined it up. And we, we, went, we went pound for pound. And they, they, called, they called me and Uncle KT. You know what I'm saying? So there's one other brother right there, KT. You know what I'm saying? They said, man, you know. Hey, T Rock, don't trip, bro. We're I, doing I think our we can thing, get man. You. you sure? You sure you can handle it? <laughs> All right, let's go. I, I, you know, like Rich said, I drink it like, like, like iced tea. Let's go. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Okay, now I, I'm gonna ask because I know if you look at the Bouillard's history, especially in the photography, big, huge. Okay, what was the most you've ever seen any of your family members ever bench press? I'll say uh, O O O was up there. You know, say O, but uh, bench about uh, five sixty. But uh, Roscoe, you know, what I'm saying he's probably the strongest. You know, what I'm saying he's in the six. You know, what I'm saying he's almost close to seven hundred. So you know, big Roscoe, yeah, he's probably the strongest. Wow. Yeah. Wow, and, and how many plates do you be hitting? On I the can get to three. That's the most I can get to. Three I on each side. I ain't, I ain't doing no five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they was eating. I'm like, damn, what, what, what's different from what I'm eating than what y'all was eating growing up? I thought we was in the same boat. <laughs> you, you, you know, the most that I ever hit, and I, I'll stop there, uh, is two plates on each side. Uh, I've always had brothers that have all lifted, all of them, and I've always been the skinny one. They're like, I ain't lifting shit. I'm a DJ, whatever. It wasn't until maybe like five, six years ago is when I started working out. Nice. I, I started changing my eating habits and I started going to the gym and I liked the fucking results. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the most I ever got on each side was two plates. My weakest was my incline. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I could probably hit maybe it's a- It's always going to be heavy. You know? Yeah. Uh, maybe a plate and a quarter. That, that's about it. But I don't, I'm not trying to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was the most that you've ever hit, if you don't mind me asking? I, I was not really into the bench, you know. I did more, you know, what I'm saying, you know, repetition, you know. Okay. Saying, yeah, I, you know, like do twenty ones, you know, three twenty ones. That was kind of like my thing, you know. Okay. I wasn't okay. more into the heavy thing, you know. What I'm saying, you gotta be, you know, my thing was more, you know, you gotta be more of the quickness, you know. What I'm saying exactly. Go from the show, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta ask you a raw question. Okay, Booyah Tribe performs, or Booyah Tribes meet and greet, or Booyah Tribes here and there. Did you guys ever run into any kind of issues, problems, anybody trying to disrespect? Anything like that? Uh, you know, we had, we had a quite a few. You know, what I'm saying one was, uh, um, you know, it was it was pretty heavy. You know, what I'm saying with, uh, with it, uh, Tone if, if you can put to, to, uh, Tone Lope's crew, you know, what I'm saying we, oh, okay. we we had a little incident, but uh, you know, nothing crazy. But like I said, it was it was uh, it was pretty scary. You know, what I'm saying okay. You know, he's representing Tone Lope tribe, and then we had the Buya tribe, and uh, you know, we got into it at the club. You know, with, you know, with the youngsters, and then you know, then they took it and elevated. But other than that, you know, what I'm saying you know, uh, you know tribe you know what i'm saying we you know we just kind of do our own thing you know i mean because i know you guys walk in it's already intimidating as it is that's why i had to ask that because i would never think that anybody would actually ever try to say something stupid 
Well, you know, you, you never know. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're, we're always, like I said, uh, we, you know, we, we, people don't know, we actually train, you know what I'm saying? Even though that we from the streets, but Godfather had us training, you know what I'm saying? How to hit, you know what I'm saying? Even when we were younger, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, we was always at the boxing gym, you know what I'm saying? We just more stay ready. Yeah. You know, you can't just have the look but don't know how to fight, you know what I'm saying? You can't throw from the shoulder. It don't make sense, right? So, you know, us, you know, even from, you know, junior high, high school, you know what I'm saying, my brother Godfather, even from my pops, you know, we used to go to the Carson the, the gym right there. Right. You know, the Chavez gym out there in Carson. Yeah. And we used to go out there and, uh, you know, hit the bag, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you got to, you know, I got to throw it. You know, you got to know how to throw them combinations, you know. So, uh, you know, but, yeah, I mean, even with, with, with Godfather and us, if you're youngster, he's have us, you know, you know, when brothers go at it. Right. You know, like, all right, you know, so like, you know, me and Red, man, you know, that he was a little, that boy was, whoo. <laughs> you know, I felt a couple of like, God damn, you know what I'm saying? Right, but right, like right. Like I said, you know, Red, Monster O, all of us, you know, we actually all fought. You know how it is, you fight your cousins. Right. You know, you fight because, you know, we want to see who got it, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. If you ain't got it, you got to work at it. But, you know, we actually train, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, how, how many, you come from a big family, a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters? Yes. Okay, like how many brothers would you say? Six brothers. Six yeah. brothers, wow. One sister. Okay, see, I come from... God, Godfather passed, you know what I'm saying, three years, and then Gangster Ridge on COVID, just about right now, it's been one year. And yeah, then my sister, uh, my sister Gigi, you know what I'm saying, she passed, you know what I'm saying, but she was fighting lupus for, for many years, you know. Okay. She was another strong, uh, you know, my sister was very strong, but uh, yeah. Yeah. From lupus, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, once again, rest in peace, oh, brother. Oh, appreciate it, man. You know. Yeah. So, um, your song drops Sunday. Yeah, this Sunday. Okay, uh, I'm gonna ask your pops a question about your music. Yeah, go ahead. I want to hear this. <laughs> oh, are, are you hard on your son as far as like, like trying to bring the best out of him? Like, son, you know what? I don't like that one. Might be kind of whack. You know, uh, try this, try that. Do you share a lot of constructive criticism when it comes to his music? You know, it's funny. I I pretty much let him do his thing. Okay. To be more on the creative, but mm -hmm. you know. I let him just, you know, I can't go there and say, well, you need to be like this, you know, like that. It's more like he just, let, I let him just do be him. Yes. You know, because I don't know what, you know, what, what his story is, you know. Because yes. like I said, you know, Booyah Tribe, a lot of people know that besides him, there's, we have different eras, you know what I'm saying? We got OGs, YGs, BGs, LGs, you know what I'm saying? He's more on the LG level, you know what I'm saying? We got, you got, we got Booyah Tribe, the OGs. We got, you know, we got Brownsville with Baby Down, you know what I'm saying? We got the... You know what I'm saying? We just got different eras, you know what I'm saying? Young yeah. Threats for the Young wise. Threats, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we got Wicked, you know what I'm saying? And these are all rappers from different genres, from different generations. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, you know, like I said, we are the OGs, but this is actually our family. Yeah. You know, even from Brownsville, you know what I'm saying? Baby Down, that boy got vocals. Yeah, you know shout out to the G. Raj music, too. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, to to the, you know, and, and Gangsta Red had, did a lot of tracks with, with the, you know what I'm saying, with, with, with the homies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, and then we got Wicked, and then now it's with him, and then now we got the new one, you know, the G3s, you know what I'm saying? You know, right. Just a lot of generations, you know. That's awesome, man. That's a so, beautiful thing. So, you know, every, everyone got to tell their story. So, back to your question is, I, I pretty much let him do his thing because I don't want to push him. But like I said, you, you got to handle it, you know, because, you know, Gangsta Reed just said, if you're going to do it, you know, say it. Say it from your heart. Yes. You know, so he actually, I was like, all right, you know, so I was just kind of like, all right. But the last bit, I said, damn, he kind of hard on this. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I feel like the first couple ones, he's like, yeah, that's hard. I'm like, man, I, I don't feel like that's an honest opinion right there, homie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> But well, this last one, he, he was like, oh, yeah, you like, you know, yeah. it sounded like he's riding the wave on this one. I'm like, okay. You know, be like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, coming with him in the next generation, even that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you, you know, just like anything, like I told you on the, on the first interview, you got to prove, you got to tell your story. Yes. You can't ride it on our back. You got to do your thing. You, you know, but we're going to support you, hey. but make sure that she's gangster. Yes. <laughs> that's and and that's, that's one thing I never wanted to uh, have people's perspective about me. Yeah. About me having to, uh, I'm not writing my the Booyah Tribe with my dad right. and them's their legacy. I mean, you know, right. yeah, it's cool. It trickled down to me, but I'm I'm telling my my life story as well. Yeah. It's not yeah. just I'm not just uh, oh yeah, son son of Booyah or you know Booyah Tribe. Of that's course, was, you know, and I don't have no facts about it, so I'm just gonna be rap rapping a, a fake ass lifestyle that I don't live. Nah, I live this lifestyle as well. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, when they were doing their thing, I, I started I started going towards the streets you know what yeah. i'm saying so what i'm what i'm what i'm saying is how my music is really what i live i'm, yeah. not, I'm not here to uh, portray any anything else i'm not right. here to portray their lifestyle you know right this is really my lifestyle as well you know what i'm saying that's dope man that's dope and, and i'm glad you allow and giving the freedom to express himself and to share his story because can nobody tell his story like him exactly 
So exactly. that's dope. So now uh, um, this last video, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what did, what did you guys film it at? And we, we, we filmed it at Cabbage Park. Oh, okay. Yeah, right here in Carson. Uh, Esteban pulled up. We, he had a blue. Oh, blast. that's the one. Yes, right. Yeah, he had a blast with us. I uh, had all the homies, the low riders. You know how it goes. Yeah. Straight West Coast, LA, LA scenery. All right, Cobra. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him here in front of you. Next video, I want to be there, bro. Oh, it's good. Come on, man. We locked in. You know you're gonna. Come on, you, now. You, you gotta pull up now. Come yeah. on, now. We got you, man. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. okay. So now, now, if I had to twist your arm, Cobra, as far as all the albums that you guys have created, if you had one personal one that you say that's my favorite, if there's one, which one would you say? I can say Mafia Lifestyle. Okay. Mafia Lifestyle was my brother's best work, and in that, you know, what I'm saying we we did a track with Rage. You know, what I'm saying Lady Rage. Yes. And we and that track that after she did her track and she heard my brother spit. See, my brother Ridden was not a punch and rapper. He was the type of person that if he's gonna spit it, he's gotta hit it from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Not punch in, punch it. Because the reason why, because when you're live on stage, you gotta spit that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So after that, Rage came, I said, God damn. You know, like she was just more like you know, I'm a fan of Rage, you know. Right. But she just came, I said, damn, do these motherfuckers know how this motherfucker's a lyricist? You know what I'm saying? But like I said, that Mafia Lifestyle album. Man, my brother Red, he killed that, man. That's like I said, personally, that's right. my motherfucking album. And, and what number was that one? That's uh, number five. Number five, okay. I still want to hear number two. So. <laughs> it's coming, you know what I'm saying? And that, and that album's called Good Times and Bad Times. Good Times and Bad Times, yes. that's dope. Who who on, on that record, because I know you, on the first one, once again, Tony did the production, and then you said you guys had uh, um, family or, or friends do the other production. Or you guys did some production as well? Yes. Oh, okay. With Monster O. You know what I'm saying? He's actually our producer. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Our brothers. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. That'll work. Now, um, 2022, uh, I know you guys are going to be dropping stuff that was possibly never released before, but knowing that um, some of the Booyah members, your brothers are no longer here. Right. Where, where does Booyah go from now? Or, or what can people expect from the Booyah tribe 2022? The if legacy still continues, you know what I'm saying? When God fought like that, I took over as the CEO of the company. So me and Gotti, you know what I'm saying, we're pushing it, you know what I'm saying? So we're just going to keep our legacy alive. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we do got an album coming out. You know, it's called, Gangsta Red had one called the LAX, was going to be his last exit. You know, you know, his Exodus album, that it was more his, like, this is my last album. Okay. So we're gonna do the be the last album that you know I'm gonna dedicate for my brother Gangsta Red. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. And um, so what can we expect from you after Sunday? An album's coming, you said, correct? So I'm gonna drop this one. I got one more visual. That's when you're gonna come to. <laughs> and then after that, I'm gonna work on my album because I have enough singles for everybody to listen to right now. Okay. Uh, uh, album like, do you think already like? The way, I'm a very detailed like person. I, I right? have a lot of songs already ready for the album. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Like, you know, it's just in my file, just waiting to be put out there, you know? Okay. But and uh, have you thought of already about an album name? Even no, though you not may yet. not. Okay. Not it's going to come, though. I, got, okay. I, I like to be creative about it, you know? Yeah. I don't like to be, I don't want to follow, you know, everybody be doing the same thing out here. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> hey, and I'm glad you said that because, you know what? I always say that. Everybody, try, everybody's sounding the same. They all sound the same. They ain't nobody sounding original. They not authentic. Like you know, be yourself. You don't gotta right. sound like the next man. Right. You 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 sound like yourself. You know. Right. Uh, for an example, Cobra. In the eighties, nineties, East Coast had their sound. We are new. Whether it was De La Soul, whether it was Run DMC, whether it was Tribe Called Quest, whether it was Daz Effects, EPMD, they all had their sound. But we knew it was an East Coast sound. Okay, right, right. down south had their sound. West Coast had their sound. Okay, if we hear uh, uh, some boom bap shit with some horns, we knew that was possibly possibly some tribe shit. Okay, we knew. <laughs> Today, I hear music all across the U.S. and it all sounds the same now. Right. Uh, I I don't hear that. That's the East Coast track. You know what I'm saying? That's the West Coast track. Unless people like you are making them and keeping that sound alive, which is still a fucking dope ass beautiful sound, right. if you ask me. But people want to ride the wave. Exactly. Uh, I saw rappers when Crunk came out. Oh yeah, we, we gotta we gotta go Crunk, homie. We gotta go Crunk. You know, and I'm like, oh, okay, go ahead. You know, and then they went ahead and went Crunk, and that shit went out the door. Like I think trap is the Crunk, and yeah, it's gonna exactly. yeah. it's gonna move on. 
And Whatever. it's going to be another one. It's going to be another one. It's not like they're going to be listening to them. They're going to be like, man, they're going to probably, they might start clowning that shit later on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, damn, yeah. I can't believe we was really listening to that back then. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like, if you if you watch a, uh, like a Dog Pound show, a Snoop show, or if you see a DJ Quick show, whatever, people still rock to that shit, sure bro. Know. It's a classic. Yeah, it's a, it, it's an anthem. It's a classic. You, you know, uh, okay, now. Uh, I'm gonna ask both of you this, this question, but I'm gonna start with you. Okay. What, what do you think, or what do you know, makes a song or an album a classic? I mean, uh, I know we can answer that in so many ways. Yeah, but like I said, it's like I said for us, you know what I'm saying? For Buya, how yes. we, we did our, it was more more of our livelihood of how we did it. Yeah. You guys can go ahead and help yourself, sir. And so. Uh, um, to me, I like an album that I can play all the way through. Exactly. You know, from start to finish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. yeah come on. Oh, yeah, you, like, you, you know, go go stuff yourself yeah, over there. My boy wants a little show. Right, <laughs> he wants to get a little yeah. tipsy. We, we, we got to celebrate. Yes, exactly. You know, what's funny you say that. Now, now, now you're telling me. But like my brother, Gangster Red, one day, just, just listen to the eight albums and then give me a call and tell me what you think. Because my brother, Red, was like that. Okay. He came with it, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So check it out, you know what I'm saying? And you're gonna and tell me and tell me what you really think. And you'll be like, this motherfucker Red was a fucking poet. Because like I said, he just came with it. Um, and it's really the, the eight album is really about our life story. He's just not rapping out, just like what he was talking about. Right. You know, my air that we came in, like we just talked about earlier about the crack air. Yes. With my nephews and all that. Yeah, we was part of that. A lot of them are just coming home, just doing 30, 40 years, you know what I'm saying? But we come from the crack era yes. that really talked about the life behind the scene of really yes. making that money, you know? Right. But Reed, if you listen to the eight albums, you'll hear the story in his voice on how he talks about it. He'd be like, this motherfucker, you know, from the beginning to the end. And that's right. how he was. Like I said, you know, my brother Reed, you know, when he would write a song and then he'll memorize it, and me and God, he's always talk about it. He would he will play it ten thousand times, and we're like, damn, it's already been two weeks, and you still. That's just the, how he was, the passion that he had of rapping. He always wanted to be the best. So when he on stage and he's rapping that song, man, he ripped. Like I said, in Europe, they all know we do an hour and thirty minutes. That's fucking dope. And they and it's and it's all impact. Motherfuckers see a show, they're like, what the fuck? I, I, I'm gonna keep it real. I don't think nobody show. We got, I say now, nah, ain't no one can fuck with us on the live show. We are the hardest live show ever in gangster rap. Europe will tell you. All the fans say, man, everyone needs to come in there. They call, all right, the show's cool. But when Booyah Trap comes, man, fucking hell breaks. They're like, oh, <laughs> shit, here they come. <laughs> I'm just being real. I'm just being real on that. You know what, man? I, we, I, we bought that live show. You know what? And I, and in Spanish, uh, it'll I'll say, estoy orgulloso, meaning I'm very proud that somebody here from the Harbor area went out there and rocked Europe, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. I'm telling you. You know, because Wilmington and Carson, you know, go together hand in hand because I grew up there, keep going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of history there. And a lot of my homies here from the neighborhood, they know and they're watching. You know, we spend half of our time in Carson, you know. Okay. So it's a lot of love, man. It's for you to, to share these stories. It means a lot to me because I grew up, you know, listening to you guys, watching you guys in documentaries, knowing about you guys, and then finally getting my Blue City answer. So, <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. You went from Blue City, y'all ran y'all power room. <laughs> I still used to say that. Damn, Booyah's mother, what, how did that go? Man, don't even cheer. That's back in the past. That's back in the past. <laughs> Why you got to bring up the past? So that's dope, man. Okay, so, so now... Um, one soon I want to bring you back and after I listen to the albums I want to go through album by album song by song and if you can elaborate on each song you know what I'm saying you'll be the first one to ever do it because like I said in Europe and they've been going crazy over the albums but like I said you'll be the first I'll do it right here dope dope yeah, okay privilege. on that first album Psycho Funk was my favorite and I'll tell you why because the way he rapped was like melodic. He was like singing, rapping. That shit was so dope. Because to me, I liked that whole fucking style. Especially when it mixed Master Spade. I used to cut up the beat on the two turntables. <laughs> you know, and, and when I heard him rap, like I was like, 
that shit is fucking hard. Yes. And then Tony G samples that Casey in the Sunshine beat. Yes. Dum, 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 dum. Oh, fucking amazing, bro. I hope you don't mind me and your dad just reminiscing. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, go ahead. No, that's dope. Okay, so now, um, do you have anything? Oh, well, you got an album coming out in 2022. Um, any shows, anything soon where people well, can. I'm going to throw my, my first show this summer. This summer, okay. I plan on doing it out here, you know, in LA. Okay. So is it going to. got to be here. Is it possibly going to be your record release party then? Uh, I haven't thought about that, but it could be. Okay. It could it could possibly be that for sure. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely there, and we'll bring you back. We'll promote it. Yeah, it's good. We'll promote yeah, it so yeah, yeah, people yeah. can go yeah, and, and, right. and show up, man. Because here at Rolling Radio, that's what we do. We have promote artists. We give them a voice that the the Power 106 is in. And I'm not picking on them, 92.3 The Beat or K Day, because many times they only interview artists that have deals, and then when they give you a a, a, a 15 a, Interview is like 10, 15 minutes, you know, and that's pretty much it. Here, at least the fans get to see you, get to know you, right. get to like you, or even dislike you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. But here's where you gain fans, and that's what we want to do here is promote uh, whatever you got going on. Yeah, I appreciate you know? that, though. Yeah, most Real definitely, way. man. So uh, uh, as far as this album, you said you already have a, enough songs pretty much Pretty much. Okay. So different producers or all different producers. Okay. But uh, you know, there's been some where like we rock together and then but there's other producers that, that are stronger in different areas than this producer would be, you know? Okay. So I'd be like, All right, maybe I feel like he can't do this. Let me go holler at this dude right here. I think that he can make it sound the way I want it to sound, you know? Okay. That's dope. If you had a bucket list of uh, this is an always I always thought to think it's an interesting question. If you had a list of maybe three artists, doesn't matter what era, now or in the past, or even if they're deceased, to do a song with each one of them. Give me three artists. My first one, I always and I always wanted to do it. I'm, I was Malcolm Ray. I'm Gangsta Ray. Okay. I always, I, I wish he was still here. Yes. He 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 got to hear me. But you know, it just his time got cut short. But you know, yeah. I wish I wish that I was I was I wish I was there with him in his prime. Yeah, you feel me? That's beautiful, you know, man. You know him for sure. I do him with DJ Quick. I was a big fan of DJ Quick. You oh. know, I, I seen I rap dollars don't you know dollars and cents <laughs> all the way from start to the end. You know, yes, true Uh, shit for the third one, shit. Uh, oh, man, I'll, uh. I have to pick a third artist. You know, I'll, I'll probably go fuck with Pop. You know what I'm saying? I, I like I, that's the people that I listen to because mm -hmm. they real lyricists. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, real was a real lyricist. Tupac was a lyricist. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, DJ Quick, you you know they you get, they dig into their minds. Right. And you know they they real creative. Right. They, okay. They, they pick things. You know what I'm saying that's that, dope. That, that's that, that's hard to me. That that that's that's a beautiful combination. Yeah. Right there. Cobra, same question. If you were to do. Uh, a new Booyah Tribe album, and you wanted three guest uh, appearances, you know, features on there, whether they're from today, the past, or even, you know, deceased. Three artists that you can choose to record with. with Tupac, Scarface. Okay. Snoop Dogg. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. That's dope. That's dope. You know, it's funny because me as a producer, somebody asked me that question, and... Mine was kind of like, it's kind of out there, but I said this, I would love to do one with Marvin Gaye, you know, mm. over, over some, you know, uh, another one is uh, um, Bob Marley, yeah. wow. you know, and then the other one was a Spanish guy named Juan Gravel. So, cause I would like to do some boom bap hip hop shit and have him sing in Spanish. And hey, you know, when I went to Banning High, right? It was uh -huh. the first time, you know, it's all Hispanics. Yeah. I don't know, a lot of them them songs they be listening to, you know, the guys singing, they yeah. be talking about some gangsta ass shit in their shit. <laughs> you know? You no, know, I used to be telling my 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 my, my, my Mexican homeboys from, from over here, I'm like, man, I don't wanna hear that. They're like, you don't even know. They talking about some real gangsta ass shit right there. It I'm is. like, well, what he saying? And then they breaking it down, I'm like, oh well shit, maybe I need to start listening to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is man, bro. man, 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 play that shit. <laughs> it, it, it is. You know, there's a lot of corridos now. 
that I just some straight like narco shit. Like, nice. yeah. It, like, Ooh, I yeah. Love I love it on yeah. it. It is, bro. Like, I love that shit. I, I'm like, fuck, this motherfucker. Like, I, w- me and my homies would be like at a bar and they start playing that shit. And you see motherfuckers walk in with, you know, Tejanas, the, the cowboy hats, the ostrich boots, big boat buckles. They start playing those corridos. And I'm like, Okay, some shit's about to fucking jump on. You gotta be looking around. <laughs> that motherfucker's up to something, huh? Yeah, yeah look the fuck top. out of here. Off top. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but funny story. One time we went to, uh, like a, it was like a spot in Paramount. People say, oh, a lot of ballers go there to eat. We went and ate, ate some salmon tacos. <laughs> salmon tacos. To me, it tasted like I was eating fucking tuna from the can. <laughs> I'm just being real. And uh, they were expensive. So the cops walk in, okay? Uh, sheriffs. And I'm like, fuck. Okay. Whatever. Even though we're not doing nothing fucking dirty, I don't know why, and I'm pretty sure many of us feel the same way. Every time a fucking cop walks in, we always feel a little iffy, okay? Well, I went to the jukebox, and they just happened to have Bob Marley there. And I played it. I shot the sheriff. Oh, <laughs> shit. I'm about to say, that got you out the jam, <laughs> but you didn't tell me which Bob Marley song it was. Yeah. I sit down. This motherfucker walks up to us. He goes, who played that shit? <laughs> And I said, oh, I did. Why did you play it? I like, I love Bob Marty. He walked behind the jukebox and unplugged that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I would have started doing the acapella. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious, though. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. We got a couple of more minutes. But Cobra, anything that I didn't ask you, anything you want to share. But before I forget, because people have been begging me for this, we're not going to get into this at least not today, but in 2003, there was a song released, 911, featured Eminem and Be Real. Came out, cool, you know, did good, and... Well, like I said, uh, when we did that, to meet Eminem to actually do the track, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, Reed was actually in the neighborhood, so we had to go get him. He was already fucked up. He was already hinned out. <laughs> like I said, Reed, like I said, is a knucklehead, so we, me and Godfather, we got, we got there earlier. To, you know, to, to hold off, he's you know he's on his way, he's on his way. So man, where he at, man? Man, he's in the hood getting fucked up, like always, right? Right. So they finally said, hey, he, he, he's at the elevator. So okay, five minutes, he's gonna pop up, homie. Man, he had about twenty bodyguards were coming through, and then here comes Red, all fucked up. And then right there, we got we got Eminem right there, just waiting to meet him. And Reed just comes out just busting right from right when the door opened. My neighbor, whoa, whoa, he just started busting, you know, busting freestyle. Right, right. And man, I looked at it and said, this mother man. And he just started hearing Reed started right in the ear, just busting, just getting at him. He started putting his glove, put on his, you know, saying his hoodie. And he said, boy, he was just, you know, mobbing on it. And he goes, man, Gangster Reed, man, the world need to see you. You know what I'm saying? So we knew that right after that. That we're gonna do the track. He said, you know what? I'm gonna not only that, I'll even produce the track. You know what I'm saying? So he gave us ten tracks. And then on that track, he did that, and one of them, B Real, was actually being on it. We always, you know, B Real, yeah. Eminem with Gangsta Red, and it happened, you know what I'm saying? And we did, it was history. But like I said, at that time for us to be independent, you know, Eminem, you know what I'm saying, on the major. Yes, of course. Yeah. It was that's big. like that, that's like, damn, well, how in the fuck that, that happened? You know what I'm saying? Right. But in anyways, what I'm saying that when that actually happened. Like I said, we knew, and I looked at, I, like I said, my brother Red was a knucklehead, you know what I'm saying? He just, right. he was just that motherfucker, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like I said, yeah, made okay. history. Yeah, that was dope. Uh, you know, if, if you can walk us through that studio session, dope, when all these guys, I mean, you got Eminem, you got B, you, you know. <clears throat> oh, like I said, it was hit. Even when we, even when we heard the 10 tracks and we, we, we all went through it, we was at the warehouse, we had the Gotti office, and T Bone, we played like that, and we said, "This nine one one, that's the track." Yeah. And then right there, we started writing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eminem went, be real, and all of a sudden, there's a wrist in it. I'm ready. Then he came in as the third one. Bless that shit. We said, that's "God damn!" But for us to be Usos in the game, right? Man, we knew, we knew, right. we knew that we made history. You know, what that's saying? dope. That's dope. Props to Eminem and be real. That nine one one song. Oh my motherfucking goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That shit was like, I said, hey, God, hey Godfather, it's a wrap. It's over. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, it was a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like I said, for us coming from Carson and do a track with our peers. Yes. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? That's so awesome, like I bro. said, Gangsta Red, you know what I'm saying? His legacy will always live on. That's you know beautiful, man. He's the truest, you know, my brother. I love him. You know what I'm saying? That's dope, and, man. You know, it's already been one year. But like I said, it's 
the legacy. You know, it continue. Yes. And, you know, it's in him now. You know, he's well, next. it'll continue to live on, especially here on Rodeo Radio as well. I appreciate that. So rest in peace, Gangsta Red. So my brother, uh, anything I didn't ask you, anything you want to share, anything you want to promote, anything, whatever. Anybody you want to diss? I don't know. <laughs> man. Uh, you know, just appreciate y'all for having me here. Shout out to Esteban for sending this up for us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, uh, yeah, that's about it. All good, my brother. Uh, we'll start with you. Shout outs. Anybody you want to shout outs? To all the homies out there, you know what I'm saying? Scandalous, you know what I'm saying? The Joker family, you know what I'm saying? The cartoon, you know what I'm saying? Cypress Hill, Kid Frost, all the homies, you know what I'm saying? Man, it's been 20, 25 years. Yeah. Who you try, man? We love y'all, you know what I'm saying? 110 family, you know what I'm saying? Love, man. Yes. Yes, coach. Boo, yes. yes. Man, shout out to my homies, man. Everybody tuned in right now. My Everybody that's been logging in with me from the start. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all. My family. All y'all. Yeah. All good. So uh, make sure you guys... Sunday, uh, he's releasing his video, and uh, uh, his Instagram has been up. Cobra's Instagram has been been up. So make sure you guys follow them, support them, be looking out for their new music. But Sunday, we're expecting that video to drop. Yeah, Mr. Whoop, this Sunday, about okay. to go crazy. If y'all ain't go check out the preview, I don't know what y'all talking about in the comments, but go ahead after y'all log out, go to my Instagram and check my page out, homie. I appreciate you. Okay, and your YouTube page, which, which, uh, where's it going to be? Uh, what's the it's name? It's the same. It's the same. D boy, okay. D boy, two two three. Okay, make sure you guys uh, subscribe, comment, whatever. Okay, so be looking out for that on Sunday. Other than that, I want to give a shout out once again, Cobra D boy. Thank you for giving me the honor and the pleasure to sit down with you across from you guys, reminisce to interview you guys. It truly, truly means a lot. No, especially knowing that I, I grew up in this city but also grew up there visiting constantly, man. It just, it's a true blessing, brother. So um, from Scott Park Pool to Carson Twin Cinema, going to the Dale, uh, <laughs> Radio Shack, the library, <laughs> try it, Big John's. Come on, baby. <laughs> so other than that, um, my boy Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise, there's not a hooty that he can't fix because he could do it in the mix. <laughs> so, and uh, my boy, Anthony the Hip Hop Jedi, uh, my son, B. Scanlon, for helping me promote this. That's right. And uh, other than that, oh, Esteban, once again, thank you. Uh, be Real, uh, Mr. Cartoon yes, from the Harbor area. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know. Let me give a shout out to my boy, Angel. Angel Montes, the owner of Los Tres Cochinitos right here. Much love, much respect uh, to all you guys. Tommy, Tommy Rivera, my boy Tyson. So much love. We'll be back on Sunday. Happy New Year from Rodium Radio. We love you guys. Thank you. Cobra will be back soon. Booyah! Voila. Got it all.